Alfonso the Battler, Alfonso the First, 1073-1747 September 1134, called the Battler or the Warrior, was the King of Aragon and Pamplona from 1104 until his death in 1134. He was the second son of King Sancho Ramirez and successor of his brother Peter I with his marriage to Araca, Queen Regnant of Castile, Leon, and Galicia. In 1109, he began to use, with some justification, the grandiose title Emperor of Spain, formerly employed by his father-in-law, Alfonso VI. Alfonso the Battler earned his sobriquet in the Reconquista. He won his greatest military successes in the Middle Ypro, where he conquered Zaragoza in 1118 and took Aja, Tudela, Calatayud, Borja, Tarasana, Taroca, and Monreal del Campo. He died in September 1134 after an unsuccessful battle with the Muslims at the Battle of Fraga. His nickname comes from the Aragonese version of the Chronicle of San Juan de la Peña, circa 1370, which says that they called him Lord Alfonso the Battle because in Spain there wasn't as good a knight who won 29 battles, Clamabanlo don Alfonso Batalador porque en España no avo tan buen cavalero que vain en nueve batallas vencia. His earliest years were passed in the monastery of Cirsa, learning to read and write and to practice the military arts under the tutelage of Lope Garces the Pilgrim who was repaid for his services by his former charge with the county of Pedro La when Alfonso came to the throne. During his brother's reign, he participated in the taking of Huesca, the Battle of Alcaraz, 1096, which became the largest city in the kingdom and the new capital. He also joined El Cid's expeditions in Valencia. His father gave him the lordships of Beal, Luna, Erdines, and Bilo. A series of deaths put Alfonso directly in line for the throne. His brother's children, Isabella and Peter, who married Maria Rodriguez, daughter of El Cid, died in 1103 and 1104 respectively. A passionate fighting man, he fought 29 battles against Christian or more. He was married, when well over 30 years and a habitual bachelor, in 1109 to the ambitious Queen Araca of Leon, widow of Raymond of Burgundy, a passionate woman unsuited for a subordinate role. The marriage had been arranged by her father Alfonso VI of Leon in 1106 to unite the two chief Christian states against the Almoravids, and to supply theme with the capable military leader. But Araca was tenacious of her right as queen regnant and had not learned chastity in the polygamous household of her father. Husband and wife quarreled with the brutality of the age and came to open war even placing Araca under siege at Astorga in 1112. Alfonso had the support of one section of the nobles who found their account in the confusion. Being a much better soldier than any of his opponents he won the Battle of Candespina and the Battle of Valladangos, but his only trustworthy supporters were his Aragonese, who were not numerous enough to keep Castilla and Leon subjugated. The marriage of Alfonso and Araca was declared null by the Pope, as they were second cousins, in 1110 but he ignored the papal nuncio and clung to his liaison with Araca until 1114. During his marriage, he had called himself king and emperor of Castile, Toledo, Aragon, Pamplona, Soberb, and Ribagorza in recognition of his rights as Araca's husband, of his inheritance of the lands of his father, including the kingdom of his great-uncle Gonzalo, and his prerogative to conquer Andalusia from the Muslims. He inserted the title of imperator on the basis that he had three kingdoms under his rule. Alfonso's late marriage and his failure to remarry and produce the essential legitimate heir that should have been a dynastic linchpin of his aggressive territorial policies have been adduced as a lack of interest in women. Ibn Alathur, 1166-1234, describes Alfonso as a tireless soldier who would sleep in his armor without benefit of cover, whom when asked why he did not take his pleasure from one of the captives of Muslim chiefs, responded that the man devoted to war needs the companionship of men not women. The king quarreled with the church, and particularly the Cistercians, almost as violently as with his wife. As he defeated her, so he drove Archbishop Bernard into exile and expelled the monks of Sahagún. He was finally compelled to give way in Castile and Leon to his stepson, Alfonso VII of Castile, son of Araca and her first husband. The intervention of Pope Calixtus II brought about an arrangement between the old man and his young namesake. In 1122 in Belchite, he founded a confraternity of knights to fight against the Almoravids. It was the start of the military orders in Aragon. Years later, he organized a branch of the Militia Christi of the Holy Land at Monreal del Campo. Alfonso spent his first four years as king in near constant war with the Muslims. In 1105, 
he conquered a giant Austin refortified Castellar in Yuslabaldan in 1106, he defeated Ahmad II al-Mustavain of Saragossa at Valtira. In 1107, he took Temerite de Litra and Esteban de la Litra. Then followed a period dominated by his relations with Castile and Leon through his wife, Araca. He resumed his conquest in 1117 by conquering Fidro, Carella, Sintrunigo, Merchant, Montagudo, and Cascante. In 1118, the Council of Toulouse declared a crusade to assist in the conquest of Saragossa. Many Frenchmen consequently joined Alfonso at Arab. They took Almudivar, Guria de Gallego, and Zura, besieging Saragossa itself by the end of May. The city fell on 18 December, and the forces of Alfonso occupied the Atsuda, the government tower. The great palace of the city was given to the monks of Bernard. Promptly, the city was made Alfonso's capital. Two years later, in 1120, he defeated a Muslim army intent on reconquering his new capital at the Battle of Cutanda. He promulgated the Fuero of Torchum for Torchum, facilitating taking the law into one's own hands, which among others reassumed the Muslim right to dwell in the city and their right to keep their properties and practice their religion under their own jurisdiction as long as they maintain tax payment and relocated to the suburbs. In 1119, he retook Chervera, Tudejan, Castellon, Tarasana, Agreda, Magayuan, Borja, Alagon. Novillas, Malin, Rueda, Epilon populated the region of Soria. He began the siege of Calatayud, but left to defeat the army at Cutanda trying to retake Saragossa. When Calatayud fell, he took Bubirka, Alama de Aragon, Ariza, and Daroca, 1120. In 1123, he besieged and took Yeda, which was in the hands of the Count of Barcelona. From the winter of 1124 to September 1125, he was on a risky expedition to Peña Cadella deep in Andalusia. In the great raid of 1125, he carried away a large part of the subject Christians from Granada, and in the southwest of France, he had claims as usurper King Alf Navarre. From 1125 to 1126, he was on campaign against Granada, where he was trying to install a Christian prince, and Cordoba, where God only as far as material. In 1127, he reconquered Long Ars but simultaneously lost all his Castilian possessions to Alfonso VII. He confirmed the treaty with Castile the next year 1128 with the Peace of Tamara, which fixed the boundaries of the two realms. He conquered Molina de Aragon and populated Monzon in 1129, before besieging Valencia, which had fallen again upon the Cid's death. He went north of the Pyrenees in October 1130 to protect the Val d'Aran. Early in 1131, he besieged Bayonne. It is said he ruled from Belorado to Palers and from Bayonne to Monreal. At the siege of Bayonne in October 1131, three years before his death, he published a will leaving his kingdom to three autonomous religious orders based in Palestine and politically largely independent, the Knights Templars, the Hospitallers, and the Knights of the Holy Sepulchre, whose influences might have been expected to cancel one another out. The will has greatly puzzled historians who have read it as a bizarre gesture of extreme piety uncharacteristic of Alfonso's character, one that effectively undid his life's work. Elena Lowry, 1975, suggested instead that it was Alfonso's attempt to neutralize the papacy's interest in a disputed succession, Aragon had been a fief of the papacy since 1068, and to fend off Araca's son from her first marriage, Alfonso VII of Castile, for the papacy would be bound to press the terms of such a pious testament. Generous bequests to important churches and abbeys in Castile had the effect of making the noble churchmen their beneficiaries who would be encouraged by the will to act as a break on Alfonso VII's ambitions to break it, and yet among the magnates witnessing the will in 1131 there is not a single cleric. In the event it was a will that his nobles refused to carry out instead bringing his brother Ramiro from the monastery to assume royal powers, an eventuality that Lowry suggests was Alfonso's hidden intent. His final campaigns were against Mequinenza, 1133, and Fraga, 1134, where Garcia Ramirez, the future king of Navarre, and a mere 500 other knights fought with him. It fell on 17th of July. He was dead by September. His tomb is in the monastery of San Pedro in Huesca. The testament of Alfonso leaving his kingdom to the three orders was dismissed out of hand by the nobility of his kingdoms and possible successors were sought. Alfonso's only brother, Ramiro, had been a Benedictine monk since childhood, and his commitment to the church, 
his temperament and vow of celibacy made him ill suited to rule a kingdom under constant military threat and in need of a stable line of succession. The stepson of the deceased king, Alfonso VII of Leon, as reigning monarch and legitimate descendant of Sancho III of Navarre, put himself forward but garnered no local support. The nobility of Navarre line behind Pedro de Otteres, the grandson of Alfonso's illegitimate uncle, while the Aragonese nobility rallied around the abbot Bishop Ramiro. A convention was called at Borja to develop a consensus, but there Peter so alienated his own partisans with perceived arrogance that they abandoned him, yet were unwilling to accept Ramiro. The convention broke up without arriving at a compromise and the two regional factions then acted independently. The choice of the Navarrese lords fell on Garcia Ramirez, lord of Monzon, descendant of an illegitimate son of Garcia Sanchez III and protege of Alfonso VII Toby their king. The Aragonese took Ramiro out of a monastery and made him king, marrying him without papal dispensation to Agnes, sister of the Duke of Aquitaine, then betrothing their newborn daughter to Ramon Berenguer IV, Count of Barcelona who was then named Ramiro's heir. The result of the crisis produced by the result of Alfonso I's will was a major reorientation of the peninsula's kingdoms, the separation of Aragon and Navarre, the union of Aragon and Catalonia and, a moot point but stressed particularly by some Castilian historians, the affirmation of Castilian hegemony in Spain by the rendering of homage for Saragossa by Alfonso's eventual heir, Ramon Berenguer IV of Barcelona. Sometime during the reign of Alfonso II of Aragon, the battler's grandnephew, a man came forward claiming to be Alfonso the battler. The only contemporary references to this event are two letters of Alfonso II addressed to Louis VII of France, they were carried to Louis by Berengar, the Bishop of Yeda, but are not dated. According to the second of these, the pretender was then living in Louis' domains, meaning the Principality of Catalonia, which was ruled by Alfonso under Louis' suzerainty. This pretender was an old man, appropriately, since the battler had died some decades earlier, and Alfonso II expressed confidence that Louis would arrest him at the earliest possible moment and bring him to justice. The first letter supplies sufficient information to date it approximately, since the bishop sojourned at the court of Louis on his way to Rome. It is known from other sources that Berengar attended the Third Lateran Council in March 1179. The letters were probably written towards the end of 1178 or in January 1179 at the latest. According to an analyst source for the years 1089 to 1196, the pretender was received with honor and pomp in Saragossa, Calatayud, and Daroca, which the battler had conquered, but after it was found out that he was false, he was executed before the city of Barcelona in 1181. Modern historian Antonio Ubieto Arteta has hypothesized that the Aragonese lords of the tenancies of Saragossa, Calatayud, and Daroca, Pedro de Luzia, La Ferenc de Luna, Pedro de Castillas Vuelo, Lord of Calatayud, Pedro Cornell, Lord of Murillo de Gallego, and the Major Domo Gemino de Artusilla all of whom disappear between 1177 and 1181 in the documentation of their tenancies, supported, at least initially, the pretender. These lords also appear in the later legend of the Bell of Huesca, which has no historical basis, as the victims of Ramiro II, 1136. Since, historically, they were not active in the 1130s, it is possible that the historically based legend of the pseudo Alfonso had some influence on the genesis of the Bell of Huesca. The earliest chronicle source for the imposture is Rodrigo Jimenez de Rada, writing in the middle of the 13th century, who records that there were several legends then current about the death of Alfonso the Battler, some believed he perished in the Battle of Fraga, some that his body had never been recovered, others that he was buried in the monastery of Monteragon, and still others that he had fled from Fraga in shame after his defeat and became a pilgrim as an act of penance. Some years later, Rodrigo writes, though he does not give a year, an impostor arose and was received by many as the battler, though Alfonso II had him arrested and hanged. This is the earliest reference to the impostor's end. The legend was amplified in later years. According to the 14th century Cronica de los Estados Peninsulares, the battler went on a pilgrimage to Jerusalem, where he lived for many years. The Cronica de San Juan de la Peña also recounts the incident, but it depends entirely on Rodrigo and the Estados Peninsulares. It is not until the 17th century historian Hieronymo Sarita penned his Annales de la Corona de Aragon that new details were added to the legend. Sarita dates the impostor's appearance to the death of Raymond Berengar IV of Barcelona, who had been exercising power in Aragon, and the succession of child Alfonso II in 1162. The death of the impostor 
by hanging, must have occurred in 1163. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.